welcome to Little Talks. Welcome to Things Matter. And today we are going to be talking on dealing with insecurities. Now, before then, my name is Kazim Mulala. And I remain your girl, Ikatofi. Now, now let's, let's talk, talk about, about it. it. Yes, guys. Now, dealing with insecurities. You know what is insecurities? You know, insecurity as different. You, people people feel insecure about different things and there are different types of insecurities but now let's 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 do, let's do think what is insecurity i'm not talking about you having bodyguards you having securities outside your compound or in your compound now insecurity is a feeling of inadequacy like you not being good enough you not being good enough and a feeling of uncertainty. It, this um, insecurity also produces um, anxiety about your goals, your relationship, and also um, the ability to <clears throat> the ability to um, respond to or to undo certain situations. And um, you know, insecurity insecurity doesn't it doesn't just happen all of a sudden. It doesn't just come out of the blues and jump on you it's it's a stage like it's um it's steps it's it's Not maintained cool. yeah. yeah it's maintained and happens when you constantly judge yourself like you constantly negatively judge yourself with other people mm -hmm. thereby um <laughs> yeah it's built up and turned into security like you judging yourself negatively uh or it's your uh, inner critique dialogues you know, you always criticizing yourself about everything you do. Now, uh, there are different types of insecurities. So we are like so many types of insecurities. Now we are going to be telling you, discussing the types and how to deal with it, the signs. So you just sit down with your pen, a sheet of jota, and note the things out. So you know where you fall and how to deal with it. You know, what category of insecurity you fall into and then how to deal with it and then we're also going to be talking about the signs of each insecurities so you'd also know it's going to be easy for you to detect where you fall into now um the first sign we're talking about is relationship insecurities now when i say relationship it doesn't necessarily have to be um a male and female kind of relationship like a romantic kind of relationship it could also be you know Father, um, child relationship, or any kind friends, of and even peers, friends, peer relationship, groups relationship yeah. is any kind of relationship. Now, what is relation? What is relationship insecurity? What do you think is relationship insecurity? Um, the thing is, it's this is um, this kind of insecurity is based on irrational thoughts and fears that that you are not good enough for a person you are not like you having the thought that you are not um, you're not better or you're not truly lovable that you you are nothing without your other person without your partner or without who the person is whoever the person is now that is relationship insecurity now there are signs um there are different signs that happens or uh, but i say there are different signs that you need to take note of to know if you're in if you're in this um kind of insecurity and one of the signs is like are you finding it like you finding it difficult to fully trust your partner you are you are always suspicious of everything he does or say like when he's not talking to you but on his phone is he talking to someone else is she talking to someone else like those you it's you know, it's wanting it's to trust someone yeah. it's another thing to fully trust someone I could trust you in a situation or in a condition like but then um, do i trust you enough to put my life like like put my life right. in, in your line for yeah. you do i trust you enough to like uh, hand over everything about me to you now that's another level of trust so you should be able to fully trust your partner but when you are beginning to have doubts now this is a sign of relationship insecurity. Oh, sorry. what if in a situation whereby the individual like your partner has already done something in the past that has that made you start monitoring his activities that made you to actually start feeling insecure what do you do with that point because probably you know stuff happening nobody is perfect you know and you start 
having insecurity. insecurity. Now, those are, that's, insecurity. those are suspicious. You've been yeah. suspicious about whatever, his next moves and stuff. Now, that is, that is when trust comes in. There is no relationship without ups and downs. There's no relationship without offense. There's no relationship without challenges. Now, the thing is, you, you should be able to learn how to forgive. People say forgive and forget. But, you know, I don't know if that forget is something... People forgive, but that forgetting, but just be able to put it behind you. I wouldn't say you should exactly, I wouldn't say you should forget, but put it behind you. You'd be able to put it behind you and then move on. You don't have to play the future with, like, from the past. I don't know how to put it. Like, you determine how your future is going to based be on based on what has happened. Past. The person is, the person is sorry. The person probably might not do it again and stuff like that. I something that will help in such a situation is you talking about it. Okay, fine, this happened in the past and now I'm having insecurity issues due to what happened. It's better you talk about it because rather than assuming, like when he's on his phone, you're wondering who is he talking to? When he's out, you're wondering where is he going? Down. Yeah, that's that's also, that also works yeah. in relationship. It does. Now another sign is relying fully on your partner to make you own, like to make you a, a good person. You like you you can't do anything on your own without your partner's yeah. involvement. You can you can dress like you can't even pick a clothes in your wardrobe without asking your partner. What like you fully depend on your partner for everything you do. You don't have a say of your own. You don't have a do of your own. Now, those are, that's also a sign of relationship insecurity. Then we also have, um, when you start, you know, when this feeling of distance start happening, like you start feeling um, there's a distance in your relationship. Now, that's probably a sign of insecurity. The, th the, the, th the funny part is, your partner might, might just be busy, probably, busy with work and doesn't really have time to do the normal routine you guys do go out talk or maybe when you're talking it's carried away doing something else now that's a bad habit but it doesn't necessarily mean something is going on it's probably just that particular time like his head is not in the game you're playing at that time so he is doing something else or she is doing something or she's carried away with work now these things also the best, I think, as you said, the, the best is communication. Communication. That communication. Has, uh, you know, learning, you guys talk, get to know what, what stage you are in, like yeah. what's going on. And even when you when you feel the distance, you should be able to communicate with the person. Exactly. Like, okay, I feel yeah. I feel you are moving. Like, yeah. There's there's this distance between us. So what's what's up? What's happening? Then you, that's where you get to know what's really happening. If it's just work or there's something going on. So now that, that is, that, those are the signs of insecurity. But if you know any more signs, you could drop it in the comments box and we we'll do well to reply you on that and explain more on whatever points you've dropped. Then um, now there are steps in dealing with, mm -hmm. managing and dealing with each insecurity. You know, the thing is there are different steps in dealing with different insecurities. Mm -hmm. So for relationship, um, I think there, at least I know for sure that there are four um, basic steps in dealing with relationship insecurities. Now, these four are first, you know, take stock of your value. Your personal, yeah, take stock of your value. I would explain that. But two, it is building your self-esteem. Then we have keeping your independence. Then four, the first one is trusting in yourself okay now let's pick that one after the other i said um the first one was yourself taking stock of yourself okay taking stock of your value, of your value. now this um this when i say taking stock of your value is knowing yourself what mm -hmm. you know um in every balanced um or well-matched relationship each partners they always they're always bringing different things different stability to the table to complement the other they complement each other you know one person is bringing something and the other person is bringing something then you guys meet at the middle and complement each other now it's good to to be secure to be secured in your relationship it's always good to know what you have to offer the other person like it's that's why most relationships don't work when you're not you're only taking 
you're not giving out anything you're not contributing to the person's life or the person's progress and the thing is personality characteristics way like way more in qualities of a relationship like it's way more important when you're talking about qualities of a relationship now think about you know think about what uh, what she bring to the table think about how you're making life better for the other person think about if the person is if the person is feeling loved supported or you know these things are what people want to feel in a relationship but unfortunately <laughs> people don't like 70 percent of pe people in a relationship don't feel that they don't have that kind of support they don't feel those kind of things in their relationship they're only in a relationship for society wants us to be in a relationship you know you get married but before you marry you have to be in a relationship with the person first now think about these traits think about this uh, <clears throat> think about how um, you're making life a better place for your partner think about no, just think about the good things you have to offer and forget about whatever negative thoughts you're having. Now, this helps in improving your perspective. This helps in improving how you see, how you know, your view in the relationship as a whole. Now, that being, that, that being said, for, yeah, for the first step of dealing with relationship insecurity, the next is... Um, dealing with um, self-esteem. Okay, yeah. Now, this self-esteem, sorry, this self-esteem, I feel like falls under all the categories of you know insecurity types the different type of self-esteem you really have to the different type of insecurity for individuals you really have to know how to build your self-esteem mm -hmm. because i believe that whatsoever you portray yourself to be that is the way people will address you even though we have aggressive people out there you still wouldn't give a them of what you are but they will still, you know, shoot at you and they want to shoot at you. But then how you carry yourself, actually, it goes a very long way to how the society and individuals see you, you know? So in a, in a relationship, when you have your self-esteem, definitely you should know who you, the person you are dealing with, you are in a relationship, you should know who you are. Then you guys should like, to be a balance, you know, you don't have to start Ways and secure, see where and, to balance. Yeah. And it's you know when you don't feel when you don't feel confident about yourself when you don't feel you as you it's only natural for you to look outside you out it's only natural for you to look outside yourself for validation you know you don't know you don't know your value you don't know what you worth now this and the thing is um, building self esteem is as simple as it's not as difficult as people think it is they are like okay uh, I did some research on how to you know, build your self-esteem and there are just two simple steps, like two simple steps. First, you know, silence every negative thought you're having and practice self-compassion. -comp every negative thought you're having, you know, you know delete, 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 you click on delete button, then time, delete, delete times one million, yeah. delete, 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 hey. then you now practice self-compassion. Now. That aside, then the second step is you know you focusing on the parts you love about yourself. Forget the things you don't like. Let it go. You don't like them, so you don't have you have no reason to always remember it. So you focus on the things you like about yourself more than the things you do not like. Now to the third step, which is keeping your independence. Keeping your independence is you know. Independence. What is independence? You know, keeping your independence. You not being dependent on your partner. Yeah. You being able to, you know, build yourself up. Yeah, and you know, meeting your needs when it needs to be met. You know, you have to be financially independent. You have to be everything independent. And um, it's like you having a separate goal from your relationship goals. You know you having your own personal goals things you want to work on yourself not having to always include your relationship or your partner in everything that has to do with your life you know you being you and then there are two ways to maintain your um self your independence yes your self-independence first is you know make time for your friends make time for your loved ones your family and most importantly your hobbies you know have you ever noticed that 
once someone is in a relationship or as soon as the person is in a relationship they tend to forget about their friends their uh, as in they just cut out from their friends they call they, they don't they no longer attend hangouts like they used to the way you call them where are you i'm with bay where are you i'm with boo <laughs> so so this thing you learn to learn to create time for the, you don't necessarily have to stalk the person you don't necessarily have to stalk your partner 24 7 you don't necessarily have to be with him you know have <clears throat> be able to do things that you know being the thing is being a fun filled person being an independent person actually makes you more attractive as a woman or a man it makes you more attractive so you know when the person when you guys then meet you have things to talk about yeah. you have things to catch up on oh i went out with my friends today and this happened we saw this you know having things to talk about having conversations to make every time now that is one step in maintaining your independence now the other step is you doing you let your partner know this is you and you of course once in a while we do yeah, that they are for, there's always room for sacrifice for, of course sacrifice. yeah but not don't let don't make it don't make it a yeah, one-sided exactly. thing you don't have to prime. be the, you don't have to be the only person sacrificing for yeah. things to please the other to please your partner now you have to do those two things you know and having a separate like having a separate goal away from your relation like you self improvement you working at you improve yourself do if, if possible you no know, professional courses engage in a lot of things that are outside you no know, a lot of things aside from your relationship just build yourself focus on yourself do everything you can for yourself that's that's for self um keeping your independence okay now the first one is trust in yourself you know um there's this saying that we all we, of course we've all heard about it you know how can you give what you don't have how do you trust someone when you don't trust yourself yeah, this is very, important. very important you know first thing first trust yourself trust who you are now you need to know that when this person does something or when this person is out of the relationship you you would be good on your own you know you're not you know there's some people that once the partner cuts them off yeah. it's over for mm -hmm. them now trust in yourself that when this person is, when this person leaves you are you are still you're still you're still a O, like you still stand you're still you then always trust your um uh, when something when you feel there's something that something isn't right you know trust yourself you, there are a lot of times when you tell you my instincts tell me this thing is happening but then you ignore it you know you allow love cover you allow most people allow love cover um the um the things they're meant to tackle which is not love right is love is not blind love is not blind <laughs> anyway. so, so you know when when you, when when you feel something isn't right tackle it when you when you feel you are beginning to you know give yourself away bring yourself back you know, take some time off most people think get um, requested for space is a breakup it's not now it's important to note that people are not perfect when i said space space means like it depends on how you know you the left the situation at hand don't quote me wrong some to some people space is breaking up now it depends on you know when you're in a relationship with someone you should be able to know what works for you guys know when when this person asking for space you know you should definitely know what he or she meant now that is that and when i say people you know just know people are not perfect challenges come up you know misunderstanding but the most importantly to feel secured in your relationship you have to let go of what other people say most times the third person is the reason why most relationships don't last so for, let's go of what the, whatever people are saying and focus on yourself so to the next side of insecurity I think this, this is a very particular one to use in Nigeria, mm -hmm. not just individuals in Nigeria. I'm not a politician, but I, I tend to like talk to some people about this insecurity stuff. And someone just immediately I said, you know, insecurity. The person said, ah, if it's Nigeria insecurity. So it's on God. No, no cap. God is the only security you have at this moment. 
for them. Let's dive into what exactly is job insecurity. You know, job insecurity is anxiety that comes up that is triggered by you know how you perform at your workplace, you know, how you even choose to put into your work performance. That anxiety, that unsteady you know, event, or maybe anxiety that is triggered from economic problems, your country, maybe they are cutting your workplace. industry, your workplace. Cutting down on staff or workplace conflicts, or you know, factors beyond your own control. This can lead to work insecurity, and there are so many, so many signs of work insecurity. Personally, I think I had a bit of job insecurity at some point. I remember when I first got my job, my first job, I felt so insecure at some point. Now, let me explain. Imagine. Going to school, you know, this is Nigeria. Going to school, studying a particular course, and study for four years, five years, only for you to graduate, and then you come to the labor market, and then you're given something extraordinarily different, not even related to what you were taught or what you went to the higher institution for. Now, at that point, I was like, I don't know anything about this stuff. I don't know where I'm going to start from. Oh my God, they are going to fire me within two days because I'm not good at this point. But then because of the kind of person I am, I'm just I'm just a positive person. I mean I literally still is going on, but then I just have to keep that positive energy for me. So I can't tell myself this okay, yeah, I can do this, I can do this. And the people around me, my friends and family that I told about this insecurity stuff of my job at that point. They also encouraged me that you can do this actually, you can do this. So that like helped me overcome the insecurity at that particular point. So insecurity, job insecurity is really a massive issue in everywhere. So many people undergo this kind of insecurity. Now one sign of job insecurity that you can know if you're going to job insecurity is perfectionism. You know? A lot of perfectionists, oh my goodness, they, they are everywhere in our workplace. There are so many everywhere. Now this is individuals trying to make sure that what they are doing is perfect at that point like they want to be in control of what they are doing they want to see the perfect results like they don't expect anything less than perfect and most times perfectionism has advantage but then the disadvantage outweighs the advantage it has so why why be a perfectionist when the disadvantage of this so much higher than the advantage, you know. So it's really not advisable when you are because it starts stemming it turns to insecurity when okay you don't get something done in time. Or probably oh, I'm the perfectionist an external factor is affecting the work you're doing. Then you start being insecure about the job performance when it's not even your fault. And one thing about insecurity is one insecurity leads to another insecurity. That's leading to how you handle certain situations and it even tends, tends to you know affect your mental health so that's why we really have to work on our insecurity and research has shown that job insecurity can lead to a country's you know unemployment can lead to a high rate of job insecurity in the country and immediately i read that i was like our country should be like on the top 10 scale of people that have you know job insecurity because there are lots and lots of unemployment. Even people, students in high institutions, they are worried, they are insecure about taking a job. Really, you see a student going studying and then by the time you ask them what course are you going for? You hear medical doc medicine, nursing, pharmacy and all of that. But then most times Nigerian universities will still help you to make the choice. And you see yourself in a course, let me say for example, fishery. You know, the community that somebody you are studying fishery, for example, in the community will be, they'll be like, ah, well, you know, there's no job, there's no opportunity for that. And then you see the students start building up insecurity. Okay, I'm going to take this course. Where am I going to work? Where am I going? To, where would I like to the job? How am I going to survive after school? What's going to happen? You know, that builds a lot of insecurity. Mind. Now, one way that we can manage this job is to challenge our thoughts, the thoughts that we think in our head. Because 
We are constant. When you constantly tell yourself, okay, oh no, I can't do this. I can't function well. This is not my field. You know, you start. It's a negative thought, and before you see it, you just you, you won't do well. But when you challenge the thought and you keep telling yourself, yes, I can do this. So I'm not thought, but there is always room for growth. I can go and develop myself. Definitely going to start affecting your mental like it really helped me because i really challenged the thought i was having at that point then i was like oh i can't do this this is not my this is not me this is not my field i don't know nothing about this but then like i also kept telling myself i can do this you can grow you learn you learn definitely there is room for good and before you know it i was really doing well at that point that is one sign of my how to manage job always standing then the other sign is for individuals that are perfectionists. You know, they they have you know perfectionists have this conditional self-esteem. They feel good when they do the work well, the way they have high grades. But then their self-esteem is high. But then once the work don't go as planned, their self-esteem becomes low, and that is something that is really not a good. It doesn't help your mental health. Why not still? Why don't you like yourself still when things don't go well as planned, or you don't have the highest grade? At least you can always believe that there is room for growth. You don't have to kill yourself over issues like that. There is always room for growth. So, as a professional, you should always like to also appreciate yourself when things don't, you know, go exactly. So that is a job insecurity. Now, for people, also one thing that can help your job insecurity is look for something that you can do to build yourself up. Really, because now we are talking about the job. There is really no job out there. There is really job insecurity is like over here in this country. It's like a normal thing because everybody is hustling. Everybody is looking for job opportunity, and most times. The number of individuals seeking for these opportunities are way higher than the opportunities they are. So you can also look for something to build yourself up, you know, create an opportunity for yourself. Now that can help you to always fall back. You don't have to like like someone told me that you, you don't have to you don't believe in you don't have to believe in a one stream of income. You should always have to diversify means by which your income is always coming. So that's it basically for the job insecurity. Oh my goodness, guys, we spent a lot, a lot of time. But before we go, let's talk about financial insecurity. Like we're just gonna brush over it. We have a lot to talk about. You know, financial insecurity. Seriously, if we had to talk on every type of insecurity, we'd be using yeah. more, like more than 30 minutes, in fact, more than an hour on this, on this particular episode. But then Let's cut the long story short. We try to um, we try to wrap it up within the t um, that time as promised. But um, financial insecurity. Mm -hmm. Just to find out it's when you know you just feel financially insecure. <laughs> <laughs> That's financial insecurity in a layman term. But then it's not about you not having finances or not having money. There are billionaires who are financially insecure. Have the money. But then there's just some. Um, this financial insecurity is all about your mentality. That's all I can say. It's all about your mentality. It's like it's this feeling you have that you are not good enough, or yes. you, you are not good enough to provide for your needs. You are not good enough to provide for the people that rely on even you. Even when you have the even when even when you, even when you have the basic like the basic things you need. The yeah. thing is, it's um, there is no source of income that would fully yeah. that would fully yeah. be able to you know cover you up from um, financial insecurity. Now, financial insecurity doesn't just happen and has nothing to do with the thing is basically a financial insecurity is about your self worth, not your net worth. Exactly. Like that nothing to do with how much you're having or it's just about um it's it's a perceived condition about you be you being financially uh, in lack. It's not financial insecurity is not like 
you not having money is not the reason why you're having financial insecurity now that's what most because i've asked people and yeah when i ask what financial insecurity that is that I when i don't have money, money. <laughs> that's not no have money. you're not having money you've been financially in lack doesn't does it's not um it, it's not the cause for your financial insecurity at all yeah. i was reading i read a story online also about something where i came across this and they say well, there is this child he came from a very influential family now the father growing up grew up was very poor he was like poor back so all the time the father whenever the father is giving him something the father constantly reminds him that he doesn't deserve the things he gets so now he grew up with that mentality that he doesn't deserve the things he gets but these people they are very rich influential so that gave him a sense of financial he was not secure even financially he was not secure and his father kept on telling him that he have to have a lot of money to be able to take care of his, his, himself and then for any woman to love him it was just a mentality all in his head so he was just working 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 it's just a mentality because he the money is there but then because of the way they brought him up and what the father has you feel it's him, not yeah, enough it's just mentality so guys, I don't know, is there something else you want to say? I think we should um, Yeah, planning this up because of time for financial insecurity Work on your mentality <coughs> Most of us feel like we can't save I, 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 I don't know how to save money I have a friend, she will be like I really want to save, but I don't know how to save money I don't know how to save She kept saying it So it's the mentality, you can save your money If you want to When you, when you want to, just put your mind I think, I, guess, I, I think it's it's like like I said, everything is in your head. Like yeah. I have I also have the um, this friend, a guy who <clears throat> who tells you like he doesn't know how to say like my nigga hey, if you see the guy now he's doing well in saving. You know, when when he when he saves little he spends like he takes yeah. that to spend. Yeah. And with with little talks and you know, kind of motivation, motivating him, he he is good, like he's doing well saving right now. So I think it's just you know changing your mindset, change your perspective about what financial insecurity is, and please do well to you know also research on things, seek financial, seek professional help. Yeah. Now those things really help you to know more about what you're dealing with. And with that, I think it's a wrap. It is. Cash here, same time, same channel, next Saturday on Stunt TV. S T O N T T V. 7 30 pm to 8 pm sun tv now we remain your host kazim omolola and i am till next time bye welcome to me to start yes you can see matters and on this show we are going to be touching every aspect of our daily lives that really matters but has been ignored little things like who in this 21st century own a business with no social media page uh -uh. and on time management some business owners resume work by 11 a.m and please do not tell me you're still in that relationship with a babe that asks for 2k urgently 2k urgently just that or the babe that asks you to solve for her you now these are the little things we are talking about and we are going to be sharing it with you guys and trust me you do not want to miss it for no reason mm -mm. now to be part of this show join us on Sun tv every saturday 7 30 pm to 8 pm we remain your humble host see how perfect kazima monola now let's go